welcome back to another drawing which we're on. Today we're going to be looking at the artist MC Etcher, who is mostly known as being a optical artist. And he kind of played around with perspective and some of his drawings look super realistic and look crazy perspective and you're like, how can a guy even draw this good? But more importantly, we're going to be looking at his tessellation, which is kind of this interesting puzzle piece that fits in with itself and repeated over and over again. And so uh, I made this cool Angry Birds tessellation. I'm going to show you how. And you can follow along and make an Angry Bird or you can experiment, which I always encourage, and make your own tessellation. But it's super fun, a little challenging, so I, I think you're going to have a good time. So let's get our pencils and paper and let's get started. All right, so here I have one of my tessellations that I made earlier. And this is the template that I used to make this little caterpillar shape that I repeated over and over again. And you can see how the shapes that I cut out down here, I then taped with blue tape. Same thing over here. I cut out that shape and I taped it on the other side. Because if you think about uh, a checkerboard, a checkerboard is just a square and it's repeated over and over again. So in order to make a tessellation, you're going to need to start with a simple shape like a square. Because I know that if I stack this, they stack perfectly together. And if I was to cut any shape out, like let's say I take my little Sharpie right here and I make a shape like that. And then I'm going to need some scissors to cut it out. And then I cut along this line that I made. It's okay if you don't stay on the line perfectly. Go around, turn it. There we go. So now I have here, if I turn it this way, you won't see the, that weird black line. Kind of looks like a, a sideways heart. Fits right there, like a little puzzle piece. Fits right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that to the top. So that if I stack these together, this little hole would fit where that shape is. Now, uh, the best way to make sure it's lined up before I start taping it is I'm going to actually, let's get my pencil. This is some scrap paper that I have. And I'm going to mark where the corners are and then where my shape goes into my square. So I'm just kind of just measuring where those things are. Because then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come move this square down and make sure that it lines up. All right, so I, I remember my square going right here. And then this piece goes right there. And so then I take that little piece that I cut out earlier and I know it fits right there. And you put it right on the top. Try not to overlap. You don't want this to be on top of this one. It sits right on the very top. And then you need a piece of tape. Make sure you get a small piece. All right, make sure it's all lined up. Make sure it's right against it. And then I tape it. All right, now I'm almost done. Now I'm going to want a beak. So this is going to be this is going to be kind of like an angry bird. So I'm going to make a beak like that. And I'm going to cut it out. And go down. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing where I take it, I measure out. Okay, so the top of the square is right here at that corner. The bottom is at that corner. And then the beak goes in right there. I move my box back. I line it up. And then I put his beak right where I marked it off at. Get a small little piece of tape. All right. Line it back up. Make sure it's butting up right against it. No overlapping. Then I just tape it. And now I've got my tessellation. And this shape right there will fit in there. And then this shape will fit in there. And so I can repeat it. So now you get your good art paper out. You don't need your scissors, your tape anymore.
Now I'm gonna start right in the middle. Now you could do it like this, like checkerboard, and just like square like that. I like to make it a little bit more interesting, so I make it like kind of at an angle, because diagonals are a little bit more interesting. And then, you trace your shape. So you gotta hold it down, make sure it doesn't move. And then you trace it. Look, notice how my tape is kind of sticking out over there. I need to fold that down. I don't wanna trace over that tape. Okay, make sure it's lined up. Okay, it's lined back up, and then I continue making my Angry Bird. Go all the way around. Taking my time. Go in, do the beak, go up, over, and then I traced it one time. Look at that. Now, I'm just gonna take this, line it up, and the nice thing is I don't trace the back of it now, I just gotta trace the front of it. Now you'll notice that as I get to the edge, some of my square, some of my little template is hanging off the edge. What you do is you just keep tracing it, but when you get to the edge of the paper, you stop. So I go to the bottom of this template right here, and then when I get to the edge of the paper, to stop. I can't do that, but when it comes back up here, you see just a little bit of it right up there. All you do is what you see. All right, now see, like up here, I move this up here. You're just tracing just a little bit. So just a little bit on, over here and then over here, just the top part. All right, it's gonna take me a little bit of time. I'm gonna do a little bit of a time lapse. I'll go real fast. All right, now I have all of my template. Temp now I have all of my tessellation traced out. Now it is time to go ahead and start drawing all the little bitty, uh, the beaks. Oops, there we go. I'll just make those a little bit darker. I think like I'm shading. Oops. Mistakes happen. Don't try to worry about it too much. I think it looks good anyway. Sometimes mistakes can be good, change them, make them work in your favor. Something you ordinarily wouldn't do, and you just incorporate into your artwork. Try not to stress out about things. I can see how sometimes it can be super annoying when you spend a lot of time on something, especially like something as intricate as this amazing design we do, and then you mess up and you're just like, and I have had to start over from the beginning. It can be frustrating. I get it, I get it. All right, so this goes down and it goes pricey maybe a little bit of this. Just a little bit. All right, da, da, da. Oh, yeah, that's pretty, pretty good. All right, now let's do, this guy's eyebrows. So let's do his, his eyebrows. Now, this is not gonna be perfect. Each one of these eyebrows is a little bit different. Trying to stress out about that. What's really important is just that it makes like a pattern and you can see it repeated.
So here, I'm gonna start making a pattern. I want the some of the birds to have a black little top, kind of like the red, like red does off of Angry Birds. But I don't want all of them to be black. I want to make like a, a checkerboard pattern. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pick one bird, which is gonna be this one right here. And then underneath it, it's gonna be a white one. And the next one will be black. So it's kind of like a checkerboard pattern. So this will be my red one, and then this other one will be, we could do opposite. We could do uh, the opposite of red is green. Do I want that, do I want, yeah, yeah, let's do that. That sounds like fun. All right, so, so checkerboard goes black, white, black, white, and also goes black, white this way. So if this one's white, then one's black, this one will be white, this one will be black. Sometimes it pays to use a pencil, so if you mess up, you can erase. So you could like slightly shade it in with a pencil. I'm using a Sharpie, but I'm double checking. Okay, so white, this one will be black. That's a big one. It's kind of funny how this one seems a little bit bigger than the others. Okay, so black, white, black, white. White, black, white, black. So, black, white, this one will be black. White, black, white. This would be black. Black, white, black. I think I'm good. All right, now what I'm gonna do real quick is I'm gonna actually gonna draw a line going across because I'm gonna leave that white, but that bird's gonna be, he's gonna be green. So I wanna make sure that this line makes it so that top's white, bottom's green. So I'm just gonna go ahead and draw these lines now. I did it after the fact just so I wouldn't accidentally start coloring it. Sometimes your brain's like on autopilot. All right, looking good. I think I can start coloring now. So let's get, let's get red. Yeah, let's do red. So this is gonna take some time, so I'm gonna do a little time lapse real quick. All right, I think that is it for my tessellation. I was kind of worried about doing the red and the green. I thought maybe it might look a little too Christmassy, but I don't think so. I think it works. I think the feathers on the top, the black and white, and red and green, it works well together. I use markers to color that one. I use colored pencils. You can really use anything. Um, you can do paint. Just make sure you know you let it dry. But that's how you make a tessellation. Well, kiddos, I hope you had fun making your tessellations. I know it can be a little bit challenging, but once you get the hang of it, you can really make some really fun and interesting things, and it's unlike any other artwork that you see. So, um, I will see you next time on Drawing with Trobro.